Um, you know, it was at the time when Coach Hartman was stepping down, you know, so there were just, just some other factors. But I, you know, grew up loving K State. I remember going to games when I was in high school. I remember trying to sneak into the student section, you know, just how special a place Ahern Fieldhouse was. You know, I had a dream of playing there. He was at that point in time when we needed, you know, I mean, here you go, come into the program, you want to get the momentum uh, turned as quickly as you possibly can. You've got, you're fortunate enough, you know, Coach Altman was able to bring Mitch with him and uh, Charlie, and then you had Will sitting on another wing and you needed, you know, a leader. Your point guard reflects what the coach wants done and, and Steve did that very well. Steve was the perfect guy for us. I mean, he competed really hard, and not just in games. I mean, every day in practice is exactly you know, what you see in games. And, and because of that, it, it, it carried over. And other players worked like that. And you know, to have Steve run the team was very comforting from, from a coach's perspective, for sure. Well, that was his first signing as K-State coach with Steve Henson to get him to come. And I think Lon sold himself to Steve saying, you remind me a lot of myself and the two of us together can really get this thing going. Steve was uh, almost a carbon copy of, of Coach Kruger. Uh, I mean, the guy was a gym rat. You'd hate to guard Steve Henson. Uh, I mean, the guy uh, was all over the place, great outside shooter, uh, just a good quarterback on the floor. When I signed to play at K-State, you know, I just jumped in with both feet and tried to do everything he asked me to do. and. Uh, just had a great deal of confidence that everything he asked of me was to help me become a better person, better player, and, and was in turn going to help our team. Steve embraced, you know, the you know the why, and not just you know getting the, the job done, but he wanted to understand the game and, and again understand you know where the ball needed to go. Obviously, the coach on the floor metaphor, uh, you could you could see Lon in him. You knew he was going to be a coach. Um, you had a pretty good idea he was going to be a good player. Um, not only in college, but for a little while in the NBA, just from his athleticism. Uh, but it just, he was, he was so low key, you didn't, you'd see him walking down the, the sidewalk and you didn't think, boy, there's a great athlete. He just, he'd surprise you once he'd get the uniform on. Well, what a lot of people don't remember was he was a track athlete here as well, was a decathlete and a seven foot high jumper, I believe. So he, he had plenty of athleticism uh, and maybe didn't look like the most athletic guy out there on the floor, but uh, he definitely had the tools. And that's why he was so good in the clutch. I mean, he, he was in better condition than most of the guys that he went up against. And, and it showed in the latter stages of games when he could really really take over a game if his team needed him to. Steve Henson was a tough, tough player on the floor. Good player, and you talk about a guy that could run a team on the floor, and when a push came to shove, really toughen up and, and make the big play for you. He just had a, a competitiveness about him, a drive, a, a, you know, as self-motivation goes, he was, you know, the best. He. He put in all the time, did all the right things, and, and did it in a manner that his teammates, he didn't do it you know, for them in a sense. He didn't do it as a show. He, he's the kind who, if you didn't see him for three weeks, you still knew that he was doing things to prepare himself. You knew that. If K-State had a lead going into the last couple minutes, you know, you felt pretty comfortable about it because he was going to make the play or make the shot or make the free throws. Put him at the line and, and he was, uh, I'm sure he won high school free throw contests at midseason tournaments because uh, he was just a machine. And, and I think one game, I think it was at Iowa State where he hit in the mid-teens as far as number of free throws in one game. I, I believe that might be a K-State record, but uh, no, it was money in the bank when he went to the foul line. He's kind of like a great closer in baseball. If K-State had the lead and he was in the game, you know, you felt like he was going to win it. His value went beyond his athleticism. It was just his leadership. You know, to me, him and Lon Kruger were probably the two great leaders, you know, in K-State history.